Hello everyone, I'm Mr. Furlong, and today we're going to talk about why cells divide. So why is it that we need to make new cells all the time? Well, there's a variety of reasons. We're constantly losing cells, and so we need to replace them, or cells get old and they get worn out, so we need to replace those. But when cells are first formed, they're pretty small and then they're going to grow just like all living things do. And this is going to affect why cells need to divide. Now since these cells are alive, they're going to need things like oxygen. And oxygen can pass right through the cell membrane and supply energy for the cells. As a byproduct, carbon dioxide is going to be released and that needs to pass through the cell membrane as well. As a cell grows, however, the volume of the cell gets bigger and bigger compared to the surface area of the cell. And as the cell continues to get bigger, the surface area actually gets smaller in, in comparison. And then they can't get as much oxygen in and can't get the carbon dioxide out and then it wants to divide. Whew. All right, so let's take a look at this process of cell division, otherwise known as mitosis. So mitosis is the process of cells dividing into two brand new cells. And when they divide in half, they're going to be half the size of the original cell. So let's substitute these two circles for some cells. And so this is just a diagram of these cells. As the cells grow, they're going to reach a point where they're going to have to divide. The volume is going to get too big for the surface area to allow for things to get in and out of it. So what happens during mitosis? Well, there's four different stages. The first stage is called prophase. During prophase, the DNA is going to form into a chromosome shape. Well, and we'll talk about this some other time. The nucleus breaks down, so there's no nucleus during this process of cell division. And spindle fibers form. Let's take a closer look at this cell. We have these X-shaped structures are the chromosomes. So that's the DNA that uh, formed into the chromosome shape. These blue lines, these are the spindle fibers, and they're made up of protein. The chromosomes are going to attach to these spindle fibers. In metaphase, the chromosomes are now all lined up in the center of the cell, and you can see how they're all attached to a spindle fiber. So what's happening is these chromosomes that actually made a copy of themselves before all this started are going to separate from one another. So in this case, we have four chromosomes uh, shown in the cell. Four of them are going to move to one side, four are going to move to the other. So remember, that X-shaped structure is really a, a combination of, of two identical chromosomes. During anaphase, the chromosomes separate and move to opposite sides of the cell. So the chromosomes are being pulled apart by the spindle fibers, and you can see that there are four chromosomes moving to each side. Now we get into telophase. Here, a new nucleus begins to form. So you can see those dashed lines going around the chromosomes. As the nucleus begins to form, the cell now is preparing to divide. So it's starting to elongate a little bit, and pretty soon it's going to divide into two new cells, which is what cytokinesis is. The organelles in the cytoplasm are going to get divided up, just like the chromosomes did, and the cell physically splits into two new cells. Let's take a look at a time-lapse photography of this process of mitosis, and we can see how this really looks like in a cell. So that's all there is to a cell dividing. Cells have been dividing for millions of years. Well, I hope you found that just as wondrous as I did, and I'll see you in class.